Friends, good morning. I hope that you have taken the time to silence all of the distractions that might be around you. I hope that you've taken the time to go to our website and to download the bulletin for today's worship because it will be helpful to you. I hope that you found there some resources for children as well, for we love them and welcome them during this time just as much. Theologian Letty Russell sees the church in its best and most full self as being a church in the round. She sees what we gather to do in its fullest way when we place the light of Christ in the center and then when we all gather in the round. Round because it is a shape that has no beginning or end, that offers no head of the table or end of the line. We are called to make it round so that all beloved children of God in all their diversity are connected to each other and are equally close to Christ. Round because we can look each other in the eye and see each other's fullness. Round because we can see all who are already here in this beautiful circle and also those who sadly are not yet. Round because the circle can become ever wider. Round, full of life, open to all, ever expanding. So friends, take a deep breath and let it go. Take another one in that the Spirit might enter you. And now, let us prepare and enter into the worship of God. We pray, God of celebration, not to let the parade of diversity and life pass us by. We promise to bring our whole selves and leave no part behind. We pray, God of tenderness, to show the world who you are and your love that knows no bounds. We promise to join together across differences to rejoice in the many colors of the rainbow. We pray, God of connection, to shower us with the binding power of the Spirit. We promise to worship in the beauty of your holiness, for we are the family of God.
friends, welcome to the worship of God at the First Congregational Church in Stockbridge. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. And that means this. It means that we fling the doors to worship and to community wide to welcome in visitor and member, saint and sinner, familiar to faith and new beginner. It means that we open our hearts to new friendships, new experiences, and to love that grows. It means we open our minds to new ideas, to long-held truths, and to questions that have no answers as of yet. It means that we open our mouths to say how glad we are that you have joined us, whoever you are and whatever brought you here today. And it means that we affirm. We affirm each one of us as the beloved child of God made in God's very own image. It means we affirm all kinds of relationships that are rooted in love and that manifest themselves in mutuality, uplifting, and faithfulness. It means that we affirm the power of the Spirit to embody in us oneness and diversity, that the world will indeed yet believe when shown Christ's vibrant unity. Welcome. Welcome on this day to the people who are physically in this room. Welcome to Ronnie. Welcome to Andrea. Welcome to Ron, to John, and to Jake. Welcome to all of you out there wherever you are and welcome back on this day to this pulpit, the Reverend Quinn Caldwell. He is a close friend, a colleague, and a mentor of mine. You are in great hands. Welcome to worship on this final Sunday in June. It is a month in the United States that is known by the LGBTQ community as Pride Month, a month where we remember diversity, celebrate it, and affirm it in its many forms. And that's one of the things we will be honoring here today. Speaking of today, I want to remind you that this service was recorded earlier. I remind you of that most importantly because if things have changed in the world, if something either of great joy or sadness has unfolded in the last couple of days, I'm sorry that we are not here to look that in the eye and to bear witness to it. But friends, there is something I can offer to you on this day. And it is this greeting. That's peace be with you. But today, we're going to expand on that. We're going to expand on peace be with you and we'll run through it again. And I'm going to show you the word for all. It's a wonderful word. This, your left hand stays stationary. Your right hand is facing out. And then it makes this big circle like you're scooping everything up and bringing it back together. We're going to add that to our greeting this morning. And while it might fit better in the middle, I'm going to put it at the end just so that we don't confuse ourselves with what we have already learned. So let's, let's run it through once and then we'll do it for real. Remember, it is peace be with you all, right? And then, of course, we share it with one another and also with you. We add the word all at the end, perhaps in homage to where I went to school, the South, where all y'all might fit better there. So you might think of that in your mind. But anyway, friends, let's do it together now. Friends, peace be with you all and also with you. Indeed. Now, I'm wondering if there are any children in this room. I'm wondering if there are any children in this room who might want to join me up front today. Oh. Well, Walter's in seventh heaven. That's okay. Walter is is with us in spirit. All right, you can take off your mask so people can hear you, please. (laughs) It is nice to say hi to the camera. And let's say hi to all your friends out there. Let's say hi to them all. Hi. Okay, now come on back over here. I know. Now, Jakey, what season are we in? 
would you say, would you say summer? Kind of between spring and summer, right? Yeah, but somewhere in there. I mean, you just finished up school, right? And so now we're into summer. And uh, Mrs. DuPont already closed Google Classroom, right? I mean, right. Um, <laughs> things I haven't quite gotten used to yet. Um, so here's a question for you. In summertime, what is the best outfit to wear? What kind of clothes do you wear in the summertime? like shorts and t-shirts. And I know today you already went to Bullard Woods. Yeah. And what did you yeah. and what did you wear there? Shorts. But what kind of shorts? What? Swim. Your swimsuit, right? Uh -huh. So, I've got an outfit that I want you to wear for summertime. It's perfect for summer. If, it, what? <laughs> That's true. So talk as loud as you want. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love you. All right. So let me show you the outfit that I've got for you for summertime because it was made in summer to be worn in summer. This is what you wear in the summer, right? A scarf, right? You wear a scarf in the summer, right? Well, they made it for the summer. <laughs> Can I tell you about why they made it? And maybe you'll think to wear it in the summer. I went to a great big gathering of people from church, from the United Church of Christ, in June, in the very month that we're in, out in a place called Long Beach, California. Now, Calif California. Long Beach, California, lots of beaches, got to bring your swimsuit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's even warmer in California than it is here. But do you know what? Preparing for us to come, there were 3,000 people who came to that meeting, and do you know what? They made us clothes to wear. They made us all these scarves. So tell me, Jakey, would you just please stay with me here? So they made scarves just like this one. And what does it look like? It looks like a rainbow. Here's why they made it for us. They made it because they wanted to remind us that just like the rainbow and all of its pretty colors, that people come in all sorts of beautiful colors and shades. And what they wanted us to do is they wanted us to wear these scarves wherever we went in hot California. When we went to restaurants, when we went for walks, when we went wherever we wanted to go. Because the rainbow is also to a symbol to people who are lesbian or gay or bisexual or transgender that we love them too. And so throughout that whole week, all of us were walking around California wearing scarves. Now, here's what happened. People walked up to us and were like, what are you doing with that scarf? So we told them. And you know what we did? What? We gave them the scarves that we had so that they would wear them. So that people all over California were wearing scarves in the middle of summer to shout out loud that God loves everybody. 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 Every single person. Yeah. Now, when I came back from that meeting, Here's what I did. I brought a scarf like this here to worship, and I told, asked the kids, if anybody was willing to wear this scarf in the middle of summer. And do you know a hand went up? Do you know who it was? It was Morgan Dix. And Morgan Dix took this scarf, and she wore it all over the place to tell people that God loves everybody, really everybody. So here's my question for you. Morgan Dix is a wonderful girl who, who came to this church for many years and now goes to a church nearby. We love her. She's great. So here's my question for you. Would you be willing to take and wear this scarf, even in the middle of summer, even as we go to different places, to remind people that God loves everybody? Would you do that? While you, wear your, while you do your quiet time. All right, so let's do this. Let's put this scarf on, and let's stand up. And what I want to do is we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. You can. Do you want to get that now? I know I told you I was going to do something about rainbows. So you made something um, for the church uh, for worship today. And I love it, and I love it in part because the awesome thing about it is it's a rainbow. 
but it's no traditional uniform rainbow because rainbows remind us that we are supposed to love everybody. So we're, I will hang this up here um, for the rest of worship. But what I want to do first, I know, and I'm going to put it there. But right now, what we need to do is we need to say a prayer. And it helps if you're really pouty to say a prayer, okay? Um, so we're going to say a prayer called the Lord's Prayer. Jesus taught us. If you know the words, say it out loud. And if not, listen, and we'll teach it to you. Let's pray. Our God, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, you can head back to your seat. The first scripture reading is from Esther. So the king and Haman went into feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace, but no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Azarus said to Queen Esther, who is he and where is he who has presumed to do this? Esther said, a foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen, the king rose from the feast in wrath and went into the palace garden, but Haman stayed to beg his life from Queen Esther, for he saw that the king had determined to destroy him. When the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman had thrown himself on the couch where Esther was reclining, and the king said, Will he even assault the queen in my presence, even in my own house? As the words left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Then Harbana, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king said, look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. The second reading is from John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can sing, see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What, of, what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus said, answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. Will you pray with me? Holy One, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you know the story of the Stonewall Inn? Christopher Street, New York City, the 1960s, the West Village. The Stonewall wasn't the only gay bar in the city, but for some people it was the only place where they were safe. Trans women of color. Nellie men too swish to pass for straight in the upscale gay bars, or maybe they just didn't want to. Sex workers, butch lesbians, people of all kinds whose gender presentation didn't match the sex they were assigned at birth, homeless teenagers who'd been kicked out of their houses for being gay and were living on the streets and surviving by sex work, they all came to the Stonewall Inn, where for three dollars they could come in to a safe, warm place and be insulated from the mean streets outside, the violence and the danger and the exhaustion, they all came to the Stonewall Inn to be safe. It wasn't a perfect shelter. No shelter is. It was owned by the mob. The staff would sometimes blackmail people they thought that had enough money to want to keep their identity secret by paying for it. And every once in a while, the cops would raid. They would come in and they would line everyone up against the wall and make them produce their ID cards. And if the sex on the ID card did not match the gender presentation they had that night, or if they had no ID card, they would take them into the bathrooms and make them strip. And if the cops didn't like what they found, they might just arrest you. But still, it was safe most of the time. It was cheap all of the time. It was community whenever you needed it, when you couldn't find it somewhere else. It wasn't a perfect shelter. No shelter is. And some people would say the decrepitude the sometimes cruelty of the staff, those police raids, some people would say that that's a cheap price to pay for a shelter like that. Do you know the story of Esther, Queen of Persia, married to the ruler of the largest realm of their day? She'd been plucked from relative obscurity, and there she was in the center of the center of everything, in the royal apartments, with so many layers of protection and insulation from a world that by any standard was a hard one. Persia, 450 BCE, was not an easy place to be. But if you were the queen, you had it easier than most. Of course, Esther's predecessor as queen had been deposed for denying a single one of her husband's commands, so there was a certain precariousness to Esther's life. And there was this. Esther was Jewish, 
and nobody knew it. Not the king, not the courtiers, not anyone in the palace. She had her secret that was keeping her safe just at a time when the persecution of Jews in Persia was ramping up yet again. That secret, Esther thought, and you might too, was a cheap price to pay for her security. Do you know the story of Nicodemus? A leader of the people in Jerusalem in 30-something CE, he came to Jesus to ask him some questions about the nature of things. He came at night, wending his way through the dark city streets and knocking timidly on the door and being invited in, sitting far away from a window there at the rabbi's feet to ask him some questions about the nature of things. He was worried they would find out he was there. He thought he'd get in trouble. And yet he had those questions, and here was someone he sensed had the answers. So that secrecy, those trips through the city by night, that hiding in that dark room, to him that felt like a cheap price to pay for that sanctuary, which wasn't perfect. But then no sanctuary ever is. Do you know the story of the Stonewall Inn? Do you know how on June 28, 1969, 51 years ago today, the cops raided again. They went right into that shelter and they lined him up and they started to do their thing. Do you know how a crowd gathered outside and how the cops made the mistake of trying to arrest Stormy DeLarvery? Stormy DeLarvery, a black stone butch lesbian who, get this, once upon a time ran the world's only fully racially integrated drag review show. It used to play the Apollo. Stormy DeLarvery, who spent the rest of her life serving as a bouncer in lesbian bars. Stormy DeLarvery, who into her 80s would patrol the streets of Greenwich Village with a gun on her hip to protect her fellow lesbians from danger. They made the mistake of trying to arrest Stormy DeLarvery. They say she escaped from the cops four times that night. Four times the cops grabbed her and brought her back and on the last time she complained that her handcuffs were too tight. They hit her in the head with a billy club. And as they were putting her into the wagon, she looked at the crowd. And she thought about the shelter they had found in the Stonewall Inn. She thought about what they had to pay for that shelter. As the blood came down her head, with her hands bound, and as she went into that wagon, she thought about that price and she realized it was too high. So she turned to the crowd gathered around, and as they put her in the wagon, she yelled, Why don't you guys do something? And all hell broke loose. Do you know the story of Esther? Do you know how... Eventually, her uncle came and sent her a message and said, Esther, they are going to kill the Jews. An edict has gone out and all the Jews are going to die. You have to do something. And how Esther said, what can I do? I have no power. I have no access. They don't even know I'm Jewish. And if they did know, they might kill me too. What can I do? Do you know the story of how her uncle said to her then, who knows, Esther, perhaps you were raised to royal estate for just such a time as this. And how Esther thought about her life. Thought about her uncle who was going to be killed and 
all those other people who were going to die while she sat insulated in layer upon layer upon layer of privilege and wealth and safety. And all she had to do was every single thing her husband said and to keep this secret and hope they never found out. And she realized the price was too high. Who knows, Esther, perhaps you were raised to royal estate for just such a time as this. So Esther swung into action. Do you know the story of Nicodemus? How he sat there at the rabbi's feet. How Jesus said, If you want to know what the realm of heaven is like, know this, you will never find out if you stay in here. That rundown, poorly plumbed, smoky bar where you have found safety and family, it was a good shelter for you for a time. Those royal apartments with all their grandeur and safety and wealth They were a good shelter for you for a time. But here's the thing. They're not your home. They're wombs. And the thing about wombs is they're made to be exited. They took care of you when you needed it. They made you safe when safety is the thing you most desired. They protected you when you were too vulnerable to survive long in a hard world on the outside. They held you safe while you were growing into the estate you now occupy. But you can't stay in them forever. If you want to know what the realm of heaven is like, you have to leave. Exit unshelter, come out. You have to be born again. Who knows, Esther, perhaps you were raised to royal estate for just such a time as this. Who knows, Stormy, perhaps you were raised to your estate for just such a time as this. So Esther, she delivered herself into the throne room and became the first Jewish queen of Persia and delivered a people when she did. Stormy Delarvery, she delivered herself onto the streets of New York City and the crowd around her delivered themselves onto the streets of New York City and delivered a people when they did. Shelters are okay. They're good. But no shelter is perfect, and sooner or later, the price of staying inside will become too high. Who knows, Esther? Perhaps you were raised to royal estate for just such a time as this. Why don't you guys do something? For if you do, perhaps you will deliver a people. Perhaps you will deliver the realm of heaven. So may it be.
Friends, as we enter into this sacred time of prayer, I would remind you to please send in your prayers of joy and your prayers of concern to Will at the email address office at stockbridgeucc.org so that he might send out those prayers to the community tomorrow because when we pray, we share our prayers with God and with each other that they might be our companion and guide for the days to come. And now, today, I invite you into a moment of silence that you might bring the fullness of your life before the fullness of of God's love. Eternal God, in whose love we live and move, we pray for a world crying out to feel loved to feel wanted, cherished, and unique. We pray this to you, the one we know as the source of all love. We pray for our world so torn apart by conflict and war. A world that lives uneasily in a climate of fear with no clear vision laid out for future days. We pray this to you, the one we know as our source of hope. Almighty God, we pray for a world that thinks less of others than of self. We pray for a world where division between nations and race, religion, neighbor, and family seems so often to lead to distrust. We pray this to you, the one we know as the source of all peace. We pray for our world that focuses so much on difference and it seems to be obsessed with division. A world, world that is far more comfortable using the word they than we are proclaiming the word we. A world that far too often is comfortable labeling the other rather than working toward togetherness. We pray this to you, God, because we know you are the source of all unity. We pray, loving God, for this world that right now seems so short on happiness, too busy to enjoy this world that you have created, too preoccupied with the complexities of life in these days, to appreciate living. Loving God, we, we pray these things to you because we know you are the source of joy. Finally, we pray for a world where spiritual longing is satisfied too often by fashionable notions and temporary solutions with no thought for tomorrow or for your long arc of goodness. We pray this, loving God, through Christ, the source of our salvation. God, for this world that needs to know your love, your hope, your peace, your joy, and your salvation, we pray that you pour out your grace in waterfalls of tenderness. Help us to remember our own uniquenesses blended together in beautiful diversity, held together through your unique and very good creative powers. Loving God, meet us where we are and take us to where we might yet be. And let the whole church say, Amen. Breathe.
the hymn, Bring Many Names, reminds us of the truth that we are called to honor the breadth and the depth of the God we follow. In the offertory anthem this morning, you will hear a name for God repeated over and over. God as giver of many gifts. God as giver. This morning, we honor our giving God by giving back from what we have received. I invite you to go online and give now to this church. Write out a check and mail it in. Find a life-giving cause and become a giver. For it is in that spirit of honoring God that this morning's offering will be given and received.
God of rainbow and fiery pillar. Bless these gifts and the giving. Bless our next breath and our living. Bless all that has been given and all who gather here today. And indeed, God, bless all your creation. And let us say together, Amen. Friends, our worship of God within these walls is drawing to a close. That our worship of God may begin anew beyond them. As you go forth from this day, may the peace and courage and love that you have heard in this service go with you. That you might wear a scarf just like little Jakey so that anyone who looks at you will know that you love everyone just as God does. And now, let us close our worship in our sending charge. We remember that in Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. We cling to the truth that God has reconciled us to God's self and to each other through the love and grace made tangible and touchable in Christ. We claim the truth that in the light of God's love, we are free to live fully and wildly affirmed and accepted as beloved children of God. We pray that joined together with and through the love of God, that our lives will bring joy, justice, and compassion to the world.
friends, God sends us out in the world to accept the cost and to discover the joy of discipleship. Therefore, go, carrying with you the peace of Christ, the love of God, and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit in all of your trials and rejoicing in our shared calling to become fully the body of Christ. And let the whole church say, Amen.